Hi everyone in Cloud Computing and welcome to episode 47 of the Cloud Computing Australia show with Brad Nelson and internationally recognised and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, Dave and I are talking about that the National Australia Bank, or NAB, and Microsoft have shown how the cloud, using cloud, AI, and biometric technologies to design a proof-of-concept cardless ATM developed using Azure Cognitive Services. Hi, Dave. It's great to have you back on the Australia show this week. Yeah, it's great to be back. Looking forward to uh, talking about this topic. Yeah, absolutely. Look, an opening question for this topic then, I guess, would be, what do you think NAB can teach us about the integration of the AI technology that they're using now? Yeah, I think it's good news, bad news. I, th I think the good news is that they're taking the initiative to leverage, you know, new AI technology, in this case, to do facial recognition, like we're doing on the Apple iPhones and other, um, you know, other points of technology to do something we do every day, in essence, identify to make sure that the user is the user, so they're not just presenting a pen, but they're presenting a human being that's going to be able to uh, be authorized to withdraw cash. Um, the bad news is, is I think that uh, you know w we may be jumping the shark, so to speak, which is kind of an American term. The fact we're taking things, you know, a bit too far and not necessarily looking at the usability of the technology in the industry. So I think that's a this is going to be something that's uh, probably going to improve security, and I think biometrics is going to improve security going forward. Facial recognition is going to be a big part of that, um, but at the end of the day, it's going to require that people, um, you know, have to do some fairly invasive things to, you know, get, you know, get twenty dollars out of the ATM to, you know, move on down the road. But I think this is kind of a step in the right direction. So putting the, you know, kind of security big brotherish stuff aside, uh, I think their ability to use facial recognition to identify people in banks, um, other you know, other kinds of points of transaction, so they ensure that that person is the person, is uh, really going to kind of uh, take off because the biometrics and the ability to kind of do things is a little bit less invasive in doing facial recognition because we're all willing to have our face photograph uh, versus the fingerprinting and, uh, you know, some of the other uh, retinal scanning and some of the stuff you go through it uh, and to do these uh, biometric authentications. And but you know, are the banks going to be willing to allow us to walk in and get money out if we don't? We're not presenting ID, our passports, or driver's license, things like that, and just with our, you know, face uh, that's used to identify to make sure we are. And I, if that's the case, then this is a step in the right direction because they're thinking about usability um, and also uh, speed of use and the ability to kind of delight the customer with the ability to kind of step up and you know make things much easier to them. You know, leveraging this stuff. So this is kind of a balancing act as we're moving forward with technology. We have a tendency, and I'm in these meetings all the time, where we just get very excited about utilizing these particular types of technology to really kind of take things to the next level. What may be missing here is the use case and the impact survey and the way in which the general public is going to accept this. Putting that aside, saying that the general Australian public will accept the fact that they're willing to leverage facial recognition and they're going to look at it as a positive going forward, then it's going to be a step in the right direction. It's just, I think we need to, I'm sure the bank has done this in this case, make sure that they do kind of, um, you know, technological focus groups to make sure they're not, in essence, um, moving technology so fast that their customers don't necessarily understand why or can keep up with it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think, uh, look, we, we're all for embracing technology and the convenience of speed and, and speed of access that, for, for that convenience. But uh, essentially, I think the mobile phone companies have been the soften, softener blow for the general public to accept that facial recognition, the, the thumbprint, that biometric kind of interaction with a, a device. So I think it's, uh, it's almost maneuvered it in, in place for banks and, and things like that to sort of say, you know, you can use your face, that's fine. But it is that um, we are signing away our identity to the bank even more so than, like you say, just a proof of ID, passport, driving license, that sort of thing. What would you, what would you consider your, your main fear point, your, your number one threat around this technology in the banking world? Well, it's really not me because I accept biometric stuff all the time. I use clear at the airport and, and uh, use spatial recognition scanning with my phone and things like that. But uh, my mother, who probably goes to the bank many more times than I do, would, would probably, uh, you know, go off 
on this particular kinds of technology for a couple hours when she realizes what's going on. And so she wouldn't necessarily accept it, be the fact that her generation has never done anything like that. You know, ATMs were, you know, kind of a new thing at the time. So it's the ability to kind of be inclusive to include everybody and the ability to kind of leverage new technology to make sure it's going to work for everybody. I mean, case in point, uh, lots of streaming systems and people can, in essence, disconnect from cable TV in the United States and Australia and leverage uh, internet streaming to do everything else. You use Pluto TV, which is free, and Netflix and Hulu and all those other sorts of things. But you have to get in the habit of figuring out that you're going to have to sign into these things every couple of months because they're going to kick you out. And they may have biometrics to allow you to sign in at some point. And they certainly do with the Apple TV stuff. And it becomes the fact that you have to very, be very technologically capable uh, in order to drive these streaming services, which means you're leaving lots of people behind who are not technologically capable, both young and old. And I think with these sorts of things, they become kind of intimidating into themselves. As technologists, we have a tendency to kind of look at technology as something that everybody's going to accept. You know, it's very cool, robots and automation and IoT-based systems, things like that. To, to probably 60% of the population, it's rather threatening and not necessarily a step in the right direction. And I think that organizations need to understand that just the fact of the matter is that we can do something doesn't mean we should do something. And you have to look at the majority of the clients and customers in terms of how they're going to embrace this technology. I, I think in 10 years, it's not an issue. Everybody's going to have facial recognition and biometrics, and it's going to be much safer than presenting a card and entering a pen. But I, I think right now, um, people are finding this stuff intimidating. And also, right now, we're probably going to end up making lots of mistakes with this stuff, where identities are going to get accessed and hacked. And um, we're going to you know, probably have problems with facial recognition technology. So some poor guy who's trying to get 20 bucks out of an ATM to go to a bar you know, can't do it at midnight uh, because uh, there's some sort of an issue with his facial recognition or he's grown a beard or you know, growing his hair long and something is, you know, there's some sort of glitch in the system. So once we get on the other side of that, that's going to be fine. But I think there's going to be a lot of bumps in the roads as we get from point A where we are now to point B where this stuff is pervasive and works very well. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, you know, utilizing this sort of uh, technology does open up a number of different threats around the, the potential, uh, hack, not just hacking of it from a, a back-end point of view and, and the stealing of identity, but also from a, the physical hack point of view. If someone's actually you know, pushed in front of an ATM and they're forced to look into a camera and just sort of you know, punch in, you know, I don't know, $1,000 for argument's sake, if they can you know, withdraw $1,000 in one go. But you know, so there's, there's those potentials as well. And I think that's, um, look, I, I'm, all, I'm all for embracing technology and I think facial recognition is definitely a, a convenient side of things, especially in an airport, you know, going through, um, you know, immigration and stuff. But, you know, there, there's some fear around that for me, I think, in a, in a banking environment if, uh, in, in the early days. Maybe, maybe later on, I think it'll be fine. I think later on it'll be fine. You'll walk up to an ATM, you'll look into the screen and you'll just think about how much money you want to withdraw and the cash machine will just give you the money. And I think that'd be, yeah, that might be not too far off. Who knows? The cognitive ability behind an ATM, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be. And we're thinking about stuff like that right now, believe me, in terms of uh, I'd be able to identify people's behaviors and I think brainwave patterns and, you know, the way in which you motion your eye are things that even retailers are looking at right now. So it's not only facial recognition, but as you're walking down an aisle, uh, you looking at a particular uh, product uh, based on your, your, how your eyes are being directed you know, is something that retailers are going to leverage in the next few years. And AI technology is really center of it. All these things are just so many images that are produced in, you know, um, millions of bytes in a second. And the reality is we need to have some, you know, some machine that's able to call through it and learn as, you know, things go on and certainly um, can increase the profitability of some of these businesses. But uh, again, the, um, the ability for the general public, because we're talking about consumers in this instance, to adopt the technology uh, is going to be something that is to, to be determined. I, I think we, in Silicon Valley, I know this is always the case, we always you know, kind of think about something, if we can do it, we're going to do it, and the public will accept it. And I think that if you get to mid-America you know, mid or mid-Australia, and you know, out in the outback and things like that, that's not necessarily you know, always going to be the case coming forward. So the organizations that are employing this technology need to balance it in terms of what the customer's desires are and the customer's expectations. And I think that's a question that's not often answered. 
Yeah, very true, very true. And it leads us on nicely to your top three tips around this topic, Dave. That'd be great if you could share those with us. Yeah, number one is, you know, you know, uh, don't overuse technology such as AI. Again, we talked about this a few times, but this may be a case where we're uh, applying a technology in an area that necessarily doesn't need to be applied. Uh, facial recognition doesn't always need to be driven by AI. It's typically going to be a good idea that we have these learning technologies in there. But make sure there's a good use case for it, a technical use case and a business use case for leveraging any sort of technology. AI, big data, you know, large scale image recognition systems, they're, they're very costly whether you run them on premise in the cloud. And there needs to be a business case to make sure if we're going to build this, you know, half a billion dollar system for a bank. That's going to drive, you know, additional business. We actually have the, you know, the business to find that it's going to drive, or else uh, you're going to answer some very tough questions to a board of directors uh, if they spent this money and there's no, there's no uh, impact or positive impact to the business going forward. Next would be make sure the business case is clear, and we just talked about that. And one of the things that I find is people do this stuff. Uh, the assumption is going to be that it's going to have a positive impact to the business each and every time, and the reality is that. That's not always going to be the case, and you need to kind of come to these conclusions before you start making the investment. And there, what's funny about when I see these failures occur, they're almost obviously they're almost always obvious at the beginning of the process. In other words, people who are developing this technology and, in essence, uh, you know, building it in the space, you know, kind of know in the back of their minds that there's not necessarily going to be a positive impact in the business with this stuff, and there has to be someone with courage to kind of bring that up ahead of time. Uh, in so many instances, I become the designated buzzkill, in essence, a asking the dev devil's advocate, advocating questions. But, uh, you know, somebody needs to do that in the organization, else people are going to make some big mistakes. And then we'll kind of uh, reverse our thinking here. Don't be afraid to try new things. One of the things that I was impressed with uh, the National uh, Australian Bank is that this is something new which is not occurring in many banks and in essence they're doing the art of the possible our ability to do something you know what else is doing and, and it be innovative and creative in, in a space where nobody else is being innovative and creative and trying to serve their cup service their customers better uh, provide better security enhance the business and, and i think these kind of questions need to be asked all the time so even though we need to call our uh we need to uh, contain our innovation and, uh, and creativity in the light of the business expectations and the light of what the customer's expectations are, the ability to keep pushing the edge and trying things with new technology is going to make banks, it's going to make other organizations more successful. Yeah, I agree completely. Great top three tips there and a, a wonderful notification sound at the end. That was a, a, great, a great little chime there, Dave. Fantastic. Uh, and I think, <laughs> what was that? Sorry, I turned it off. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, yeah, no, great top tips. And you're right, you know, I think the banks are leaders in, in pushing that envelope to, to making customers, you know, think of how they're going to engage, interact and, and work with, you know, the various different ideas the banks have to put forward. And, you know, more often than not, they, they, they win that over. But, it, you know, it's a challenge. Uh, to get to that middle, you know, region, say of Australia or Middle America, to make sure that they're finding there's a a use for this a benefit. There, there's a, a benefit behind uh, being able to, you know, use your face to draw money out <laughs> or pay a bill or something like that. And I'm sure it catches on uh, at some point. We'll 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 watch and we'll watch this space. But I'm sure it'll be very very interesting. Dave, thanks for being part of the Australia show this week. Always a pleasure. Thank you. It's always great to be on. Thanks for inviting me. Absolute pleasure. And thanks for watching, everyone. Really hope you enjoyed watching this week's Australia show. Uh, you can get David on Twitter, which is at David Lintican. Uh, I'm also on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. Remember to like, subscribe, comment and share these videos and channel with your friends and colleagues. Uh, and also click the notification bell so you don't miss out on all the latest shows that are coming up on a weekly basis. You can get us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, uh, all the other social media things that we're out there doing. We provide lots of content. Dave's writes some uh, exclusive blogs for us as well which you can check out on the website there's links below in the description box to everything i say this every week but i'll say it again thanks for watching and until next week